Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. He got daddy twice and granny, and now it's my turn. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to John chapter 5. John 5 and 24. And while you're turning, I'm going to have a word of prayer. Lord God, I thank you for the day that you have prepared for us. Lord, I ask that you forgive me for many and all sin in my life. And I pray that this will be the prayer of every soul in this place. Lord, I ask that you send your anointing down in this sanctuary. Lord, I ask that you would hide me behind your blood, that you would hide me, hide me behind your cross today. Lord God, I call down the fire in this place. I ask, Lord God, that you would send the anointing, send the fire, let your spirit move from the front of the pulpit to the back of the church. I ask, Lord God, that you would walk each and every heart and that you would walk by each and every soul and that you would pass by us in this place. Lord, I pray right now that my breath would be the breath of God. I pray that this would be a message from you, not a sermon that I have prepared. Lord God, I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you come down and that you sup with us in your house today. Lord, you said my house would be a house of prayer. And Lord God, as we start this service, we start with talking to you. Lord, I ask that you forgive us and that you help us and have mercy on us today. We need you, Lord. We need you. Yes. Reach yes. down and help us and lift us up and hold us up. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. John 5 and 24, and it reads like this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. For as the Father have life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself and hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Marvel not at this for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Now today, as we sit in church, I want to teach you about the resurrection. Amen. Now I want you to know that there's going to be two different resurrections. The first resurrection is going to be of the saints of God. And we call that the rapture of the church. Amen. amen. Can I get an amen, amen out there? Amen. And then we have another resurrection of the evil dead, the sinners that never repented and come to God. Now before we get into it, I want, to, I want you to understand that when you die, when you take your last breath, your soul is conscious. I know that a lot of preachers preach that you're asleep in the grave, and that's not so. When you lay down and you take your last breath, you go to one or the other place. Amen. When you lay down and die, when you take your last breath, your soul goes to God. Or your soul goes to hell. One of the other two places, there's no in-between place that we're going to pray you out of, okay? Can I get an amen in the house of God today? When you lay down and die, your soul either goes to hell or your soul goes to heaven, but your body goes in the grave. Now, at this time that Jesus is talking about when the saints are resurrected, it says that there's going to be a great shout. It says that there's going to be a trumpet, Mel. It says we're going to hear this noise. And it's going to be so loud that it wakes the dead up. And it says the dead in Christ shall rise first. Oh, come on, church. Let's preach a little bit. Let's have a good time. It says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those that remain will go to meet him in the air. Now, that's the first resurrection. Come on, church. That makes me feel good. When I think about the resurrection of the saints of God, when I think about a trumpet sound, and I hear that sound, and I'm looking for his coming, that I'm going to go.
go to be with him forever and ever. Amen. See, our souls are going to be judged on that day for our good works. Amen. Amen. And why? The saints will be judged as according to their works that we done here for God and his kingdom. Can I get an amen? amen? Come on, church. Does that make you excited inside? Amen. See, we're going to go to heaven and we're going to live with Jesus throughout eternity. Yes. Yes. We're going to be resurrected. We're going to be given a new body. Amen. Oh, come on, church. We're going to have a new body. Amen. They said I was getting big. I told them, yeah, I'm growing this way now and losing my hair and looking like that. <laughs> but we're going to get a new body that's glorified. We're going to get a new body that's like unto Christ. Uh, see, we're supposed to start now. We need a heart like Christ and a mind like Christ. It says, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. A lot of us are in our graves right here in this church right now. Come on, come on. Come on church. We hear about doing good. We hear about the word of God. We hear about living for Jesus and believing on his name, but we don't do anything about it. That's right. See, it takes more than just believing on his name. On. You can believe that Jesus Christ died. You can believe that he was the son of God, but it takes some action after you start believing. See, when I give my heart to Jesus, uh, I was born again. I died unto my old man. I died unto the one that I used to be. And I'm not the same person that I was before. And now that I stand here, I have the blood of Christ that's overcome me. And it runs through my veins and it makes me a new person. It makes me a new creature. And then when I hear that sound, whether I'm alive or whether I'm dead, I know that I know that I know that I'm going. See, if there's any question in your mind whether you're going or you ain't going, I don't think you're going to go. If you're questioning your salvation, you ain't got it. Come on, church. Come on, when's the last time we come to the house of God and we come down to the altar? And they sang an old hymn. And we cried out unto God and we hit our knees and we asked God for repentance. We said, Lord God, I'm sorry for what I've done. I'm sorry for the way I've lived. I don't want to live that way anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But we want to do everything that they're doing, and we're not going in this resurrection. Wow. See, there's two resurrections. The first one's the good one, amen? amen. The first one's the one you want to come out of because you don't want any parts of the last one. That's right. That's right. See, there's two resurrections, but there's two deaths also. You say, what are you talking about? Well, you die in the physical body. But to be separated from God throughout eternity, that's called the second death. Yeah. Can I get an amen? amen? It says, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Unto the resurrection of life. See, when Jesus died and he resurrected himself, that gives me hope. Yeah. Because, see, I'm partaking of his blood. And he's put that blood on my life. And when God looks down on me, he don't see the old oil that I used to be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen on the front row? Thank you, Jesus. I'm not the same anymore. He said, done good unto the resurrection. Done good unto the resurrection. We talk about doing good, but are we doing it? How many people did you invite to church this Sunday? Well, and I didn't I didn't do it for the numbers. We're not here for your body, amen. I'm here for souls. Amen. There's so many preachers yeah. that stand up in the pulpit uh, and they want you to give their dollar bill uh, and they want bodies to fill the seats uh, and they want to have the biggest church uh, and the biggest congregation uh, but that's not why we're here uh, and them preachers ought to sit down somewhere. We're here for souls uh, and your soul is worth something. Your soul matters this morning because it's either going to come in one or two resurrections. You're either going to be resurrected in this resurrection, the rapture of the church, or when the horn blows. Wow. And he comes down with a great shout, and we go up to meet him in the eye. I want you to envision that in your mind. Amen. 
Amen. Come on, that's going to be something. Amen. A lot of us in here ain't ready for that day. See, if you ain't believing on Jesus Christ, if you ain't living your life according to this word, if there's sin in your life, I don't care what kind it is, you are not going to go there. When you take your last breath and your soul leaves your body and goes one to either place, you ain't coming back. That's why I don't believe in ghosts, amen? That's right. The people in hell, they can't get out. That's right. The people in heaven, they don't want to come back. Okay? There ain't no ghosts, it's demon evil spirits that come around us, okay? Come on, church. We got to get on fire. It's time to get some fire down in your gut. Uh, it's time to get a flame in your eye. It's time to start doing what you need to do uh, to make it in that day are we striving for. Yeah. I say, no, ma'am, no, sir, we're not doing it. We're not giving it our all. We're not laying down the things we need to lay down. We're not pursuing after Jesus Christ. And there comes a consequence with that. And I want you to turn to Revelations 20. And we're going to talk about the other, other resurrection. Revelations 20 and 10. And it's called the great white throne judgment. And this is what it says. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and of brimstone. Lake of fire and brimstone. Where the beast and the false prophet are. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Yeah, yeah. See, when you die, your soul goes to either place. And if you go in the first resurrection, if you've been born again, we're going to go with Christ. Yes. But if you're not saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to die and you're going to go to hell until this time. Yes. This is after the millennial reign. And when this time comes, he says that he saw the dead and hell gave up the dead. Hell gave up its souls. The sea, the, the souls come out of the sea. And they all went to stand before God. And they was judged according to the way they lived their lives. Yes. You say, what are we going to be judged on? Well, I'm not going to be judged in this because I'm going out in the first one. Amen. Yeah. But they're going to be judged on the secret things of their lives is what the Bible says. See, we come to church. And we play Christians. Come on. And I've told you like this a lot of times. When we was kids, we used to play church. Yeah. I was the preacher. <laughs> we'd play church. And we'd shout. Me and Tiffany would come in here and we'd preach sermons on faith. Yeah, sure we'd get the microphone and we'd preach our little hearts out and play in church. And now we old and we still play in church. We done got old. We still play in church. And Jesus is getting ready to come back. The trumpet is getting ready to sound. And we still play in church. And we're going to die. And we're not going to be here anymore. We're going to go to hell. And then we're going to have to come and be judged here at the great white throne. Yeah. Because we wouldn't repent of our sins. We played too long. That's what Barney was talking about. Yeah. How many times have we stood in this church right here at Bethel Bible? And we give the altar call and we were singing the song and you felt the Lord moving on your heart. And you knew it was time. I need to make a move. I need to go down here and get rid of this burden. But we never went. 
We never come. We never laid it down at the altar. And we carried it back out when we left. One day it might be too late. One day you might not be able to make that chance again. This might be your last sermon. That's right. yeah. This could be your last church service that you ever sat in. Uh-huh. This could be the last word you ever hear before Jesus Christ come back or, or you took your last breath. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to meet him? And if you're not ready, are you ready to stand before God in judgment? At the great white throne. But see when we get there. If you're in that number. Nanny's not going to be there to stand for you. Come on. Papa's not going to be able to say. Hey this is my grandson. He preached. Uh, and he healed people. And he, he preached your word. And he done things. And he prayed for the sick. Uh, and he lived a good life in front of the people. Yeah. Come on. He was a good boy. You ain't going to have daddy to stand up for you and say, yeah, I raised him right. I taught him the right way. uh, And he did what was good in my eyes. I ain't going to have him to go in before me. It's going to be you and God. You're going to stand in front of the throne, in front of God Almighty and Jesus Christ at his right hand, in presence of all the angels. And you're going to give your account and you'll be judged by the books. You say, what books? The books that is recorded of everything you said. Every thought you had. Every hair that come out your head. He knows everything about you. He knows where you're sitting. He knows your name. And he's recording the things that we're doing. And it says that if your name is not wrote in the book of life, You'll be cast into outer darkness forever. You'll be cast into the lake of fire. If there's any sin in here that's hiding, any sin, you're not going to go into the kingdom that he has prepared. In the next chapter, he talks about the new Jerusalem and the kingdom of heaven. But see, it says that hell's going to be cast into the lake of fire. The devil, the false prophet, and the beast is going to be there. And you'll be tormented throughout eternity. All the signs in the Bible are for the second coming. And I want you to understand that there's two things here. The rapture is not the second coming of Christ. The rapture is when the church is called away. The first resurrection. The second coming of Christ is when he comes back on a white horse at the battle of Armageddon and all the saints that was resurrected with him is going to be behind me that's me and we're going to be adored in white and he's going to come and on his thigh it's going to say king of kings and lord of lords and he's going to fight at the battle of Armageddon and he's going to defeat the army of the enemy with the word of his mouth And then he's going to set up his kingdom for a thousand year millennial reign. And after that period in time, that's when this is going to happen. The great white judgment. All the dead come up. And they'll be judged according to their works. But see, I'm going to be having a party at that time. (laughs) I'm going to be living my best life as the king. Come on, church. Which resurrection do you want to be a part of? See, all the signs are pointing to the second coming of Christ, the battle of Armageddon, when he comes on the white horse. That's all the signs in the Bible. Just think how much, if that's so close, and we're seeing these things here on earth, if that's so close, the second coming, the battle of Armageddon, Jesus Christ coming to set up his kingdom here, how much closer is the rapture? Amen. It could be right now. It could be in the next few minutes. Amen. He said in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. See, what's going to happen is our spirit, if we're dead, it's going to come down and meet with our body. And our body will come out the grave if we're already dead. And then it's all going to come up and be glorified and we'll meet him in the air and we'll live with him throughout eternity. Amen. That's good. 
That's good, church. Amen. I want to read you one more scripture. I want you to go to 22 and 11. It says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, now this is Jesus talking. He said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. You say, what does that mean when they're talking about the unjust? What does it mean when it talks about the filthy? See, on that day when you die, or the rapture, whichever one comes first, the state that you're in then is going to be the state that you're in when you're resurrected. You say, what are you talking about? If you die right now and you die filthy and unjust, when you are resurrected, you're going to be resurrected filthy and unjust and be judged. But if you die and you're righteous, and if you die and you're holy, when you're resurrected, you're going to be resurrected righteous and holy. And see, as you sit here right now, as you sit in the pew, and I stand here, we're either in one or two categories. Right now, you're either righteous and holy, or you're filthy and unjust today as you sit here. There is no in-between. You can't serve God on Sunday. You can't serve God just a little bit uh, and then filter out to the world the rest of the week. Uh, you can't take a little bit of the world and a little bit of Jesus uh, and mix them together and think you're righteous and holy. It takes uh, a separation. Uh, it takes uh, you being born again, dying to the old man uh, and living under Jesus. You're either righteous and holy or you're filthy and unjust. Right now as you sit here in this place, what category are you in? And that's going to determine which judgment you go into. I want to be righteous and holy. Not by anything that I've done, but what do Jesus Christ done for me on the cross. Through faith in him, I can have his righteousness. Amen. Amen. I told y'all a lot of the a lot of times the same saying. I'm gonna tell you again. I had a man tell me one time that you can't be holier than everybody else. I did. I did. I had, he looked at me right in the eye. He said, "You can't be holier than everybody else." I said, "Well, why not? Cause ain't nobody living holy nowadays. Uh, I want to live my life according to the Word of God. Uh, I want to have some fire down deep in my bones." Uh, Jesus. I, I want to see the fire in my life and the ones around me. I want to spread a revival at Bethel Bible Church. I want to go out in the rapture. I want to live with Jesus forever. And I want you to be there with me. But you better be righteous and holy now. You better start living that life right now. Not tomorrow. Not one day when we clean up a little bit. It's now. This could be the last time you ever heard the word of God. This could be the last time you ever heard his word. The way things are going in our country, it looks like they're going to take it down any day. You, you never know. That's right. They had already shut the churches down one time. We let them shut them down. Yes. Next thing you know, they're going to be coming to your house and taking the Bible from you. How much have you put in your heart? How much of the word of God do you know? How how much are you teaching your kids the Bible? How many times have you got down on your hands and knees and said, Lord God, I love you in front of your children and they heard you pray? My little boy can say some of the prettiest prayers. Yes. Amen. That's a soul. Yes, it is. You're not just growing children. That's a soul. 
And that soul is going to go into one or two places. And it could be up to you where it goes. Yeah, right. The way you leave them. What you do. I watched my granny and my grandpa preach all my life. My daddy preached all his life. And I run from God and done things that won't right. And I lived a wrong life. A filthy and a nasty and an unjust life. But I knew what was right. And today as I stand here, I can be righteous and holy because I've been born again, truly born again. Praise God. And I want to change people's lives Amen. so they can go to be with us in heaven. What state are you in this morning? Are you unjust and filthy? Are you living dirty? Is your soul black? Or are you righteous and holy? And everything you do, everything you say, everything you teach is according to the word of God. My granny trained me as a little boy. They trained me. I wandered away, but I'm back. Amen. She's training my boy. I go over in the morning time, and we have a cup of coffee, and I drop my little one off, and she tends to him while I'm at work. Amen. And she's putting the word of God in him. Yes. He'll run around. You say anything that ain't halfway right, he'll say, you better repent. <laughs> <laughs> influencing the ones around us yeah. are we influencing them to be the right thing to do the right thing to be saved, to be holy to be sanctified or we teach them to be just like the world those are souls your soul is precious Amen. that's what we're here for I don't want your dollar I'm working two jobs Amen. Amen. I'd rather have a small group of people that are on fire for God and, and learning and growing than to have a sea or multitude of heathens. Wow. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to see some people that's on fire for God. Amen. You got the twinkle in your eye when you talk about the old life. Where's the twinkle when you talk about Jesus, the one who died for you? Amen. We get all happy and start smiling how we used to live and what we used to do. And we brag on all that. Why well, about we start bragging on Jesus uh, and about his blood being applied to my life uh, and how I'm not like that anymore and I don't have to live a life of a transgressor, but I can live a life that's righteous and holy through Jesus Christ our Savior, the one who died and bled and shed his blood for you and he shed his blood for me on the cross of Calvary that we could go in the first resurrection and live with him throughout eternity. Amen. Amen. This morning I love you church and I appreciate you. He said, I'm the alpha and the begin I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the alpha and the omega. Yeah. He was here before, he's going to be here after. And you are too. Your soul is going to live forever in one of two places. Today, right now, is the time you decide. You got to choose. Amen. We're making choices every day. What kind of choices are we making? Are they right or are they wrong? Are they just? Are they according to the word? A lot of times they're not. Our soul is worth something today. Your soul is worth something. That's why they're fighting over it. Amen? Amen. Will you stand with me this morning? I'm going to sing a song. While I'm singing, I'm going to sing the verse, first page 83 in your hymn book. I'm going to sing the first verse in the chorus, and then I want you to keep singing. I'm going to pray, and if God is dealing with your heart, I want you to come up here and make it right. I'll pray with you. I ask Rayford if he'll come to the front and stand and pray for people to come, and I'm going to help him.
And as we sing this song, I want you to give your heart and life to Jesus. And I want you to really picture yourself uh, in which resurrection you're going to be going in. Is it going to be the one where we're going to meet Jesus in the air? Is it going to be the one where you stand before the throne and get judged for your sin? Yes. Page 83, Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be a sin, the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Could my tears forever flow could my zeal no longer know these for sin could not atone thou must save and thou alone in my hand no price I bring simply to thy cross I cling. Keep singing, I'm going to pray. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you draw souls. Lord God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you convict. Lord God, I ask right now that your spirit would go forth and that you would bring them to your house and bring them to your altar. Lord God, I ask that they would bring a sacrifice. They sacrificed their life to you that we could go out in the first resurrection. Lord God, I want to go to be with you and I pray that this would be the prayer of the congregation. Lord God, I pray right now that if it be one under the sound of my voice that's sinning, that's living a life that's filthy and unjust, that they would come and make it holy and righteous through your blood. Lord God, I ask that you would deal with us right now, but have mercy, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Yes, yes. I love you this morning. I appreciate you. Yes. And I'm going to ask Rayford if he'll pray our benediction. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning for this passage. And Lord, I pray.